Hi, welcome to AP Physics practice sessions for mechanics. I'm Dee Dee Messer, AP Physics C teacher at William Mason High School in Mason, Ohio. This video, we're going to practice multiple choice questions over the topics of gravitation and simple harmonic motion. You have two choices. You can download the PDF on the link that is shown and have a paper copy and follow along or do the questions ahead of time. Or every time I switch the screen and show a new question, you can pause the video, try to answer the question by yourself, and then resume to see what the final answer is. Either way, it's up to you, but let's get started. For question one, we have a mass of a planet X that is one tenth that of Earth. Its diameter is one half that of Earth. And what we want to know is what is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of planet X? So let's start with analyzing planet Earth. From our equation sheet, our gravitational force equation, and I know that Fg on the surface of the planet Earth is mg. The mass of the object cancels out, and I get the acceleration equation is big M, big G, all over R squared. Starting with that equation, now for planet X, I'm gonna substitute in one-tenth of the mass of planet Earth, one-half of the radius of planet Earth, and I derive this equation. Here I can see that big G, big M over R squared is also equal to the little g. So I make that substitution, put in 10 for little g, and I find that the acceleration is four meters per second squared. That is choice B. Let's try the next question. The radius of Earth is approximately 6,000 kilometers. I have an astronaut that is 300 kilometers above the Earth, and we would like to know what that astronaut's acceleration is in a perfectly circular orbit. I know that if they are in orbit, then there's an acceleration because their direction is changing. So it can't be zero, and 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth is not far enough away to be essentially zero. So choices A and B can be removed. Now we're down to three choices left. Starting with that gravitational force equation, making the substitution for the surface of the Earth equation, I get G equals big G, big M over R squared. This time, however, the radius of the Earth is changing, so I'm going to move that over to the other side, and I'm going to leave my constants big G and big M. Starting with the equation now for the radius that's 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, then I get this equation. And I can see that again, big G, big M in the equation, make that substitution for little g r squared. Now I have all of my variables where I know their numerical values, make those substitutions, and I get that we are approximately nine meters per second squared, which is choice D. All right, let's try question three. Once again, a satellite is moving in a circular orbit with a speed V naught at a distance r from the center of a planet. Now this satellite is moved still in a circular orbit, but has a new distance of 2r from the center of the planet. What we want to do is calculate what is the speed required to make that true. Starting with my gravitational force equation, this time, since I want speed, I know that the acceleration is centripetal acceleration because the orbit is circular and centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. The mass of the satellite cancels out and solving for V, I get V squared equals big G, big M over R. Now I'm gonna substitute in my new radius or my new distance of two R. And I see big G, big M over R in the equation from my original. Substitute that in for V naught squared. Take the square root of both sides and I get the speed of V naught all over radical two, which is choice B. All right, let's try question four. Here I have a newly discovered planet with twice the mass of the earth, but the acceleration is exactly the same as it is on earth. I wanna know what is the radius then of this new planet in terms of R being the radius of the earth. Once again, I'm gonna start with Newton's universal gravitational force equation. And on the surface of planet Earth, Fg is equal to mg. Little m cancels out. 
and I'm solving for the radius. So I'm going to get R squared equals big G, big M all over little g. Now I want this to be for the radius of the new planet. And I get G all over, or G, big G times 2M all over little g. I know that big G, big M over little g is equal to R squared of planet Earth. So I can make that substitution. Taking the square root of both sides, I find the answer to be radical two times R, which is choice C. All right, let's look at a different type of question. Sometimes on the multiple choice, we have a stem that is similar or the exact same for multiple questions. So here's a situation where I have an elliptical orbit of a comet around the sun. Positions one and two are shown. And position one is 10 times as far away as position two. So what I'm going to do is say that from the sun to position two is a distance of X. And from the sun to position one is a distance of 10 X. The first question, what is the ratio of V1 over V2 of the speed of the comet at position one to speed at position two? It is important to remember which variable is on top and which one's on bottom when they ask for ratios. So here, make sure that you're paying attention to V1 is on top and V2 is on the bottom. If the orbit is elliptical, then I know angular momentum is conserved because there are no external torques. If I want linear speed ratio, then my equation for angular momentum, I'm gonna use the one that has linear speed, which is R cross rho. Making the substitutions, I know that the distance from the sun to position one is perpendicular to the velocity. So the sine of 90 is one. So the cross product on both sides goes to one. And then linear momentum is mass times velocity. So I make that substitution. Mass of the comet cancels out. Again, make sure that you put V1 on top of V2 for the ratio. The distance for position two was X. The distance for position one was 10 X. And I get 1 10th as my ratio, which is choice B. Now we're gonna stay with the same stem, but this time we're gonna ask a different question. Here at position two, we're gonna calculate or figure out what the comet's kinetic energy is. Well, I've already figured out that it has a velocity at position two. So I know it can't be equal to zero. So choice E is removed. I also know that there is a ratio that was not equal to one. So the velocities can't be the same. Therefore, the kinetic energies can't be the same. So choice A is also removed. Now we're down to three choices. Kepler's second law talks about how satellites sweep equal areas in equal times as they orbit. So the farther away that the comet is, the slower it is moving. And the closer it is to the sun, the faster it is moving. So at position two, I am the closest I will be, so I am moving the fastest. Therefore, the kinetic energy is a maximum at position two. That is choice C. All right, let's switch it up from gravitation to simple harmonic. In this situation, I have both a graphic and a stem paragraph that's going to talk about a situation and then multiple questions asked about that same situation. So here we go. We have an unstretched ideal spring hanging vertically from a fixed support. There is a 0.4 kilogram object attached to the lower end of the spring. The object is pulled down 0.35 meters below the unstretched position and released from rest at time t equals zero. Therefore, at the graph, you can see that the spring is already stretched as soon as we start collecting data. The graph shows the vertical position of the lower end of the spring as a function of time t, where y equals zero when the spring was initially unstretched. The first question, at which of the following times is the upward velocity of the object the greatest? I know that the slope of a position time graph is equal to the velocity of the object. So at times 0, 0.5, and one second, 
I am either at a maximum or a minimum value. Therefore, my velocity is zero and can't be the choice. So just knowing that piece of information gets me down to choices B and D. At least you get a 50% chance of guessing if you're not sure what to do next. Here though, I know that I want upward velocity. That means I need a positive slope. In between 0.25 and 0.75, the only one that shows a positive slope is 0 0.25 seconds, choice B. Staying with that same situation of an ideal spring, the next question asks, what is the spring constant? Well, knowing that it's ideal, I can start with the equation from the equation sheet, two pi equals the square root of m over k. K is what I am solving for, for the spring constant. What I need is mass, which is given to me in the problem of 0 0.4 kilograms. And I need the period T, which I can get from the graph of one second. Now that I know I have all of my numerical values, take the equation and solve it for K. Then make the numerical substitutions for both mass and period. And we find that K is approximately 16 Newton per meter. One thing to notice with this one is that when you read the question and you know you're solving for k and pi is in the answer or is in the equation, look at the answer choices and make sure you see if they are in terms of pi or not. So that when you do the calculation, you know what constants you can leave and which ones you need to multiply through. New scenario, a certain one dimensional conservative force is given as a function of x by the expression f equals negative kx cubed, where f is in newtons and x is in meters. What we're asked to find is a potential, potential, a possible potential energy function for the force. Because it's conservative, I know that force is the negative of the slope of a potential energy curve, or negative of the derivative potential energy with respect to x. Taking that equation and solving for a potential energy, we get u equals negative integral f dx. I substitute in my expression for the force, and I want to integrate from 0 to x. That gets me x to the fourth over 4. And when I evaluate with respect to my bounds, I get positive 1 fourth kx to the fourth, which is choice d. All right, last one. Which of the following is a differential equation that correctly describes Newton's second law for a simple harmonic oscillator of mass m and force constant k? So here, the equation of Newton's second law lets me know where to get started, that my net force is equal to the spring force, which is causing the simple harmonic motion. My net force, according to Newton, is mass times acceleration, and Hooke's law lets me know that the spring force is equal to negative kx. I know that the acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. And that is my differential equation. Notice again, when you look at the choices, you do not need to solve the differential. You just needed to write it down. And that is choice B. And that is all we have today for this section of the AP Daily Practices for Mechanics. All the practice sessions that you watch and any additional practices that you do are going to make a big difference come AP exam day. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.